Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today it's a revisit of a Wii U that I did back in July 2018, so that is now one and a half years ago. Now, I bought it from eBay, I did my best to repair it, I thought it might be a faulty battery or something like that, but I couldn't get it to work. So the Wii U console was fine, it was the gamepad, this part here, that wouldn't charge and it wouldn't turn on, yet the battery itself had full voltage in it, so it was fully charged up. Narrowed it down to a problem with the actual motherboard itself, but I couldn't work out what it was on the motherboard. Now it's a year and a half later, so I feel a lot more confident fault finding. Still, haven't done any Wii U since then, so I don't know my way around them, but I, I think I would be more likely to find a fault now than I was a year and a half ago. Still, I might fail again, but, uh, yeah, what I did is I couldn't find a fault in the motherboard, so I bought one from China, posted to the UK. It was advertised in the UK, this one here. So I thought, brilliant, it was only £14. When it arrived, I fitted it, and yes, the gamepad turned on, but unfortunately, when I went to actually sync it to the console, that's this bit here, then what happened was it said I needed to update. Went to update, and basically it came up with unable to update, because basically, not only is this region locked, the gamepad is also region locked as well. So, if your gamepad goes faulty, you have to buy it in the region that you are in. For example, the US or the UK. So this one here would be a US motherboard, even though I bought it in the UK. So then what I had to do is I had to buy one from a UK seller, advertised as a UK motherboard, this one here, and then it started to work fine. And it went out of my head until somebody asked me the other day about did I, I think it was, did I ever find out what was wrong with the Wii U or, did I, yeah, something like that, or did I ever fix the UK motherboard? And I thought, you know what, I'd love to look at that again. So that's where we are today. So here is a fully working one. And as you can see, when I plug in the charger here, this little light goes on. Orange light, and then I go to turn it on, it will go to blue, and then it will come up with the screen here. Now at the moment, I haven't got the console on, so this won't be working, I just wanna show you what it does. So it takes about, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds to fully turn on. Should be any second now, there we go. And it says, could not connect to the Wii U console. Turn off the Wii U gamepad, then turn it on. Uh, uh, and then turn it on closer to the console, but obviously I haven't got the console turned on. But you can see what happens, and you hold it down for a few seconds, and it goes off, and it goes back to charging again, yeah? And that's how it should work. So now, this one here is actually a working one. I've just kind of stripped it out of here just to see what I could get away with. So I've had to plug certain things into it, but now, in this state here, it will turn on. Remember, this is the working one. Right, and you see I've got a little orange light here, just gonna zoom in. Right, so I've got an orange light there, go to turn it on, and it will go to blue for a few seconds, and then it will go to orange. So right now the screen is on, but obviously I haven't got it connected to anything, so you can't see the screen. And then if I hold it down for about three or four seconds, it will turn itself off again. There we go, and again, turn it on, it will go to blue, etc. Right, so now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time I'm gonna do it with the motherboard that was faulty, because I was sure that I didn't actually do anything to it, but then when I got it out today, I had a look, and basically, on that other video, I had a comment from, let me show it here, a Thomas Forsyth, and he said, the problem is with the, I think it was like the, the power IC, or the charging IC, and that is chip U18. So basically, that is this chip here, U18. And I suppose it does make sense, let that focus, there you go. It does make sense because this is where the battery gets connected. So I suppose it's a short distance to go to this chip here. Now, when I look at my faulty board here, I can see, oh sorry, I forgot to mention something. I read online that this was the chip that was responsible for the region lock-in, and I actually changed this over from the Chinese one to this one here. And I think from memory that was my first actual chip I unsoldered using hot air and then soldered back on. And basically the same problem happened. So this wasn't to do with the region locking. It was just the incorrect information on the internet. But still, it worked.
when I put it in. So it meant then, so this chip was originally here and this one was originally here. So it meant that my soldering was actually okay. But when I got this out today, I looked and I noticed there was gunk around this chip here. So I think that I've either reflowed this or I think I might have, after that off camera, changed these two over after possibly reading that message from Thomas. But I didn't film it and didn't put it on a video, but what's interesting is when I put it in here, it is now partially working. So it is now showing a charge light, which it definitely didn't before because I watched back my, well, I fast forwarded through my original video that I did back in July and also the revisit video and it's not showing up as charging when I use this faulty board. So 100% this is the faulty culprit here when it comes to charging the U18 chip, hence the reason for redoing this video. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take this chip off and I am gonna basically try to put it back on again because I think this chip is okay. I hope I haven't burnt it in the process. And then I'm gonna see if I can get this one working again. Now, it's not without its problems because basically I've got a little plastic connector off here. This connector is to do with the backlight and I've got a plastic connector off here. I think this is to do with the touch screen because this is the screen connector, but I could be wrong. But 100% this is the backlight because on uh, when I had this one connected and working, every time I flipped the, this is the working one here. Every time I flipped up the little gray connector, the backlight went off, the screen went off, and every time I put it back on, it went back on. So the screen's always working, but you can't see it because the black light's not working. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna put this one in now to show you what it's doing, and then I'm gonna put the Chinese one in to show you what it's doing. And you'll see now the Chinese one's completely dead because of this chip that's been swapped. The weird thing is, you think I would remember doing that, but I suppose because I didn't film it and edit it up and stuff, obviously it slipped my uh, it slipped my mind. Either that, or I've reflowed it, but I'm thinking now, why is the Chinese not one working? And why would I bother reflowing the Chinese one? I wouldn't, would I? And also, have a look, I've definitely put heat on them, because you can see up here it's slightly melted, and up here slightly melted. Yet on this board down here, that looks absolutely fine. So you can see it doesn't come out of the factory like that. So uh, let me just quickly fast forward through this and connect up these two just to show you what they're doing. This is the Chinese one, so I'm just gonna plug in the charger now and you can see that it's not, uh, it's not lighting up at all. There's no lights there whatsoever. So it's interesting to know that that U18 chip is the one responsible because I'm sure this would be oh, not a one-off. You know, I'm sure this has happened to other ones. Maybe when charging it, if there's a if there's a surge or something like that on the if there's a surge, a lightning strike or something, maybe that chip blows. So you can see there's nothing happening there. Yeah. Now let's do the same on the original faulty board. Connecting up the speakers is because as you heard on that other one it did make like a noise when it didn't connect. When I do it on the working one over here for some reason it's not making that noise so maybe you do have to have other things plugged in rather than just a speaker. Not sure. Or maybe it's connect. maybe it's like coming up with some different sort of screen that's not making that noise. Right okay so this is now the one that was originally faulty and look can you see now? Okay, I've got a blue light because I've just plugged it in, but that will go out in a minute. Now the weird thing is nothing will happen until I unplug everything and then uh, plug that in. No, it's flashing orange light, one second. Right, there you go. So we have the orange light. Now, let me zoom right in. We do have the blue light, but it doesn't behave exactly the same as the other one. I think it doesn't last as long and then it kind of seizes up afterwards. So watch this now, orange light, so in theory it's charging now. Press it, it goes to blue. Blue goes out, back to orange, which is which is normal, because that means it's still charging. But uh, now, I think what happens is, look, if I go to turn it off, so I'm gonna hold this down, hold it down for about three or four seconds. So right now, it would normally be off on the working console. Yeah, let go. Now if I press it again, it should go to blue, but it won't go to blue, it will just stay like this now. Can you see? It doesn't matter how long I hold it down for, it won't go to blue. So what I have to do is unplug, disconnect the battery to like reset it, plug it back in, and you see, see blue light again straight away, which it shouldn't, I think it should just be orange and then go to blue. Plug that in. And can you see now, 
it's not doing anything. So you have to do it in like a set order in order to get that orange light. So I think that that U18 chip is either faulty again, because maybe last time I applied too much heat, or I'm hoping that it's just not on correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my hot air station, I'm gonna take that chip off, I'm gonna try to clean up the pads a bit, and then uh, I'm going to try to put it back on to see if we can get this working. Now, as I say, I don't know whether it will be, whether I'll actually be able to get it fully working, because I think it's unlikely I'm going to be able to get the clip back onto here. But I did keep the clips because they are. I can see they're just in this bag here. So I've got one here that does look good, and I've got one that looks broken. But maybe if I use my microscope, I'm wondering whether I would be able to get that one on. Not too bothered about the touch screen. If I can get uh, if I can get the backlight on, then I'll be happy. Maybe I can do something else with the touch screen. Well, maybe I can put a bit of captain tape on it or try to get a bit of pressure down on it. But I haven't normally had much success with these when they break on me. Well, so I'm going to get my hot air. I'm going to put some flux around this. I'm going to take it off. And then let's see if we can uh, get it back on. Maybe this time I might be more successful. I'm set up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out a couple of things in this video. To begin with, I'm going to try out my new flux. I've still got this Amtec flux. I've still got quite a bit of it left, actually, but I was getting worried because if I ran out of this, then I'd be in trouble. I was struggling to get that in the UK. Loads of you sent me loads of good links and stuff like that. A lot of the links was from America, and then by the time the postage comes over, in fact, the majority were from America, by the time the postage comes over, then it would be really expensive. I did get uh, loads of ones from eBay in the UK. Again, the problem is I'd be worried about having the proper stuff and not the kind of... Uh, imitation stuff so I bought this from RS components because I know that's a trusted company in the UK it's chip quick it's tacky flux the total price was about 30 it's quite expensive about 35 pound I think by the time I paid the VAT and stuff like that and it's for 30 cc which is the same as the Amtec so if I like this stuff fantastic I can just get it from RS, also CPC said it as well. And when you're buying from RS, see they have their trusted suppliers. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be selling fake stuff, are they? So uh, if I don't like it, the reason I'm going to start using it now, if I don't like it, I can go back to my Amtex Flux, order some from America from a, a proper place, like for example, Lewis Rosman sells it. I know it's going to be expensive on the postage but it's gonna last me a good six months or longer anyway, but I'm hoping I'll get on just fine with this stuff here. So I might as well use up the new, do you know what? I might as well just use my old nozzles because then maybe I can use these nozzles for my solder paste. Now, there is one other thing I'd like to show you. I looked into getting some tips, but unfortunately, I like the look of this J tip here, but unfortunately, I bought from eBay and uh, the picture didn't match what actually arrived. So in the pack, it's only a cheap pack, you know, these are not branded goods, but uh, in the pack it showed that there was a bent tip, and when they arrived, they were all straight, just like the ones I've already got. So what I did is, I know this is probably sacrilege, <laughs> but I got some pliers, and I bent one of my existing points, because I've got loads of them. I've got loads of these in here that are near enough identical to each other. So this might fall apart as soon as it's heated, but I don't think it will. Apart from there being a few little scratches high up, that looks fine. So that's going to be nice now for drag soldering, because you can see it's nice and smooth. Also, you have more surface area, so more heat's going to get to the board. If I want to do fine stuff, I can basically put it this way around and tap it there. I think you can also use it like this, to get in between the pins to remove bridges and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to testing this out. Now again, this chip here is absolutely tiny. You see it compared to my thumb there. But if you look at the legs on it, you can see that they might lend themselves to being dragged across with this thing here. So I'll see how it goes. I'm gonna put it on with hot air, but you never know. If I do need to sort out some bridges, I might be able to use them with this tip here. So uh, yeah, exciting times. Right, let's... What am I going to do? Yeah, let's just take it off, get the fan on the go, let's zoom right in, use some of this flux, and see how we go. Right, so we're ready to go. Now, I'm looking at this board. It does actually look quite thin. So I'm not sure if there's layers. I mean, can you tell there? Can you see those dotted lines and stuff? Does that indicate that there might be, that this is a multi-layer board, or is it just top and bottom? I don't know, but it doesn't look very 
doesn't look like there's much to it, it looks quite thin. So I'm going to put my heat down to 350 degrees Celsius. Let's get this new flux going around it. I hope this works to say, I, I bet it does. I bet they all use a very similar formula. I'm going to get some extraction on the go. And I've got my airflow four out of eight. Right, well, okay, I would have expected that to come off by now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more flux and I'm gonna turn it up to 400 degrees. Right, so I've added more flux and I've put it up to 400 degrees Celsius and I've gone to 5 out of 8 out of the air, uh, with the airflow. There we go. Right, so with a little bit more heat, that came off uh, just fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna clean up those pads a little bit with my soldering iron. And then I'm gonna apply a bit of leaded solder to it. And then we'll see what sort of connection it makes. Now I have to thank PDS for the link to RS for the chip quick. See, I'm not the best yet at using these electrical sites, you know, the search thing. I don't always search the right thing, or for example, I would have found this, but I wouldn't have seen the tacky flux. So PDS often helps me with the with the comments, giving me links and stuff like that. The saying that so many of you did give links, it's just that he was the first one to do it. So as soon as he gave me that link and I seen it, I thought, yep, I'm gonna give that a go because it looks identical to the Amflex, uh, Amtech stuff that I've been using. So I'm just going to flood this area with a bit of leaded solder.
Now let's use a solder braid and try to remove it. So the reason you put a bit of leaded on is because it brings down the temperature of the unleaded because leaded melts at a lower temperature. So hopefully now it will be easier to come off with the braid. Now I know it's hard to do but I'm trying to go in line with the with the pads so I don't rip any of them off. But that's kind of easier said than done sometimes. Well, I think that's most of it off. You can see that I've definitely got solder on the braid. So now let's put some flux on it. Actually, no, let's clean it off now with some IPA. Well, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to add some leaded solder to it. So let's put some flux on it again. Now for this I have got my solder iron set to 480 degrees Celsius because yeah, it doesn't apply much sort of thermal mass to it so when I put it on here although it might be 480 right now as soon as I touch it down here I don't think it's got enough power behind it to keep it at 480 I'm just going to take some away from the middle because I want it to. I don't want the sit uh, the chip to sit high. Do you know, I think that will be enough because I think that blob will spread out. I think that will be okay. Right, so let's turn over the chip to see what it looks like. Interesting that the actual heat thing doesn't seem to be dead in the middle, does it? You know, the, the heat sink or if that's a ground. Let's see if that's a ground in the middle or not. Because I made that mistake before. I always thought they were ground, but a lot of the time they're not, they're just to get the heat away. Yeah, okay, in this instance it is a ground. Right, so I'm just going to clean this chip with some IPA. 
and then hopefully I'll be able to read the markings on the top because you can see on this there's a little arrow here so this is the one that has to have the dot on it right and you can see the dot up here so it's got to go on this way here so I'm going to put some flux on it Right, and we'll roughly place the chip on and let's see if surface tension will bring it into place. So I'm going to heat it up again now. There we go, did you see that jump? So I'm happy now that that's gone. Let's give it a little tap. Hold on. Definitely jumped. There you go. Yep. Yeah. That's done, so I'm just going to put some downwards pressure on it because I don't know whether I'd put too big... Oh, I've got the shakes. I don't think I can put downwards pressure. Hold on. Let me see if I can get more comfortable. Right, that jumps in there. No, I can't do it today. I'm just going to have to leave it do its thing, I think. Unless what I could do is maybe let it cool for a second. Right, now I can put downwards pressure on. Now I can heat it up again. Right, so I can see some solder balls forming. Nah, I can't do it. There we go, I'm going to leave it at that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that special tip. I'm quite pleased that I've got some solder balls here. So obviously I put too much solder on that middle blob. But I'm pleased because it gives me a chance now to try out my new tip. Well, not my new, my homemade job to put around and see if it will get rid of them or not. Houston, we have a problem. My tip's so bent it won't actually go through the end. Look, it won't go through the end of it. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Yeah, let me see how hot this is. No, it's okay. All right, do you know, I didn't think of that. So now I've got it stuck. All right, so I'm going to have to put less of a bend on that. That's annoying because I measured that against the, uh, in my own way, against a proper Heiko one or whatever they're called. Right, let me try to straighten up this bit because I kind of want to keep that end tip like that. Let me just try to straighten up this bit here. Right, that might do. I know it looks a funny shape now, but I just want it to go through. Yes, excellent. Right, that's gone through now. 
Right, so I'm not going to clean it up, I'm just going to add some more flux to it and I'm just going to use the existing solder that's already there. And then I can give it a nice big clean at the end. Right, first things I notice are I try to put solder just to sort of tin my uh, tin this tip and when I wipe it I can't wipe away that part from it when I put it into my sponge so maybe with this one now I'd have to use the metal you know that kind of ball you get that's full of you know to remove the solder you can get like uh, like a wire meshy type stuff right let's let's see how this is gonna go now Right, okay, I think that got it. Let's try this one here. So I have to rearrange myself. I've turned it upside down now. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, I think I put the blob onto the diode, but who cares? It's off the pins. Oh, nice. Hoo -hoo. First impressions are, I like it. But I'm going to give that a really good clean now with some isopropyl al alcohol, the IPA. And let's see what it looks like. I found it, I knew I had one. It's looking everywhere for this. You can get them very cheaply off, uh, off eBay. And uh, yeah, that's it. Can you see it's just like copper shavings or something? I don't know what you'd call it. Anyway, let's see if this gets rid of it. So the benefit of using something like this apparently is that I use a sponge all the time, but every time I hit this against a sponge, then what's happening is it's uh, it's cooling down, you see. I don't think it'd be cooling by much, but I suppose when you put it in here, it's not going to cool down to the same amount as a wet sponge. And look, it has cleaned it. Excellent. Right, let's give this a clean up now. Okay, so I'll zoom in and show you that now and we'll have a close look, see if there's any bridges and see if it looks like they're all connected. So I think first impression, I'm happy with this. It doesn't really seem any dissimilar to what I've been using already. Maybe the chip took a little bit longer to get off than it would with the Amtec, or maybe, I don't know, you know, it'd be different if I was working with these balls all the time, I would notice the difference. It could have just been because I had it at the lower temperature, while normally I do blast as much heat as it, at, uh, at it as my machine will allow, so that was probably more likely. So I think, I'll, I think I will be happy with that. Right, I've just looked through the eye loop. I'm really, really happy with that. So if you have a look, they look like they're all connected. Looks a little bit, uh, that's just a black plastic looking a little bit shiny on there. Might be a bit of leftover flux or something. But they all look connected. I can't see any bridges. They look connected. Can't see any bridges there. Or there. Or there. So it looks like I'm uh, really happy because with the other soldering tips, I would have struggled a bit on there. So I think maybe that little tip is the way to go. Honestly, I'm so happy with that. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop this back in the board. I'm just going to have to clear out of this room because everybody wants to go off to bed now. It's quite late in the UK. And I'm going to uh, uh, put this back together, set myself up downstairs, and then let's see if it does anything different than it did before. Right, so let's pop this back together and see what happens. Right, here goes. So let's see what's going to happen with these lights. Let's plug this in. Right, we've got the orange light, let's zoom in a bit. All right, let's see what happens with the blue. Okay, it's gone to blue. Now back to orange, okay, but it did do that before. 
But now what I'm going to do is, let's just leave it for about a minute to let it fully turn on. Right, I haven't heard any sound out of the speakers, but saying that, the working board didn't do that either. Right, I think it should be on by now, so let's hold it down to turn it off. Excellent, it flashed, it didn't do that before. So now if I press it again, brilliant, yes, it's gone to blue. It didn't do that before. It froze itself up when I did that. So now I'm going to put it back together. The screen's not going to show because of this connector here, but let's put it back together and if I put pressure on the connector, you know, the one I talked about earlier, this one up here, if I put pressure on it, I wonder then would the screen start working. I'll be brilliant if this is fixed. Not that it's going to be used because I've already got a replacement board that I bought from eBay, but it would be just nice to know that it's fixed. Right, let's pop this back together. Now, I can't put the back cover on because I've got to put pressure on this thing here. So let's just turn it around and let's see what it's going to do. I'm not sure what's going to fall out. Hopefully nothing. Right, so we've definitely got the light. Now let's uh, hit on and see if it's... Uh... Right, so it's gone to blue. Excellent. Can you see we've got something on screen? Ah, no, it went off there, didn't it? Oh, but that's probably normal, sorry. It only stays on blue for a second. Right, let's have a look, see if we've got anything here. Let's put pressure on this thing. Oh, no, I was sure that was going to work. Turn it off and turn it back on again. Excellent. Yes, there it is. It's just because of the connection at the back. So let me wait until it comes on fully. I'm going to let go at the back and see if it does anything. Ah, oh, that's brilliant. I thought it flickered when it did it before. Okay, so it flickered there. But is that because... Is that because it's not working or the thing at the back? Hold on, let's do that again. Definitely wasn't doing this before anyway, so we've, we've made progress. Interesting that it doesn't show up the next part. Hmm, and I've, I've got a lot of pressure at the back. Okay, look, we even without touching the back, it goes to... Oh, no, it's gone off. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have a look around just to see if there's anything... See if there's anything I can do differently at the back. Maybe I've got something connected wrong or badly. confused now. I'm confused why it's doing that. So it's like it's booting up so far and then it's booting up so far and then getting lost. Now I'm just thinking I swapped the chips with the Chinese when I swapped this chip over didn't I? And I seen if this one was working, but I don't know whether the chip in here is now good. Do you know what I mean? The solder joint on this chip might not be good. Or there could be multiple faults with this board. I don't know. Because remember, I've never got this far. I've never had it where it has come on. So I'm going to take it apart again. I'm going to have a look at the chip on the other side. Because maybe I have to swap that chip back or just double check that it is soldered properly. Right, so let's pop this back together. Well, I can't see anything obvious, all looks fine apart from this area here where I was working. There's a lot of flux in between the capacitors. 
So I have cleaned it all already, but uh, it's, it's kind of like jelly in between them. So I'm going to clean that up again. I'm sure that isn't the problem. The chip here, all the pins are definitely connected. I've gone across all of them with the tweezers and they are uh, connected. It's in the right place. Yes, I may have broke it when I put it on there, so I can always take it off this one again. That's not a problem. Unless, of course, you have to have this one on here. Maybe that's married to something else. But remember, this worked. I, I mean, it didn't work because it was region locked, but there was life in it before and after. There was no difference before and after changing that chip. So... Uh, I don't think it's that. So I'll do that. I think I'll put this back into this one, the working motherboard, just to make sure that I haven't damaged something else in here. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed. I mean, you can see I've got further, but maybe let's just pretend there was some sort of lightning strike on the, the power line and a surge went into here. If it blew this, it might have taken out other components as well. I suppose I could go across every single component and see. That is an option, because remember I have got spare ones on here, but I still don't know what chips are married to the, the board as far as the region lock things concerned, because obviously if I take the chip off here, that is the American chip, and put it onto here, then I'm going to have the problem with having the, uh, the region locked motherboard again. So I'll spend longer on it and see, what, uh, see if I can uncover anything else on it for a while and I'll uh, get back to the video when I found something. This is the working motherboard and as you can see it's definitely displaying so there's nothing wrong I haven't damaged any of the ribbon cables or anything like that so uh, I'm gonna get my soldering iron out down and I am just gonna go across this chip here. Uh, do you know what I'm gonna swap the chips back over because then this board will be original apart from this power chip here. I mean, surely the power chip's not linked in any way to the motherboard. Surely it must be interchangeable between motherboards. Yeah, let me do, let me swap that chip back, see if that does anything. Right, let's just remove these chips. So this is the Chinese board, so I'm just going to put some flux on there and the other side. Get the hot air to it. Take the other one off, swap them over. And we'll see if that makes any difference and then that will eliminate any kind of bad solder and also the chip at the same time. I'm going to use the same temperature as before so I'm at 400 degrees Celsius and I'm 5 out of 8. Let's remove this chip now. Well, while, while the ball's still warm, I'm going to put on the uh, the new chip. Not the new chip, the other chip, the original chip that was on there. Right, and on this one I'm going to press down quite hard. There we go. I'm just going to get some solder and I'm just going to go over those joints with some fresh solder so I'm just going to put a little bit of flux on it again and then we can give it a good clean up. 
see what it looks like. Right, so I'm going to try using this tip again to see how I get on. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to give it a real good clean, then we can have a close look. So 100% they're definitely all connected on the right pads and they've all got nice big lumps of solder on them so uh, yeah again happy with the hot air and then happy with the the J tip or whatever they're called so let me try this now and see if this makes any difference I'm not going to film the putting back together because you've already seen me do that so I'll get back to this when I'm about to turn it on right, let's see what's going to happen now do you know what I'm not hopeful because I don't think that chip I don't think the chip was faulty Still, we'll see what uh, see what it does. Oh, I forgot to do the I forgot to do the screen up here. I'm going to leave the touch screen disconnected for the moment because the touch screen it's not necessary to actually turn it on because I tried that on the other one. Right, so we've got the light on, let's see what it's going to do Nintendo yes! amazing! amazing! so this chip well, maybe I burnt it when I took it off, or maybe it does have to be the correct one for the actual board. Oh, fantastic. Right, so what I have to do now is get that touch screen connected, and also I might try to get the microscope in and see if I can get that plastic connector back in, because I've managed to break the one for the touch screen here, but if it's the same connector, which I think it is between the touch screen and the backlight, this one still has the backlight on it, so I might be able to use that one for the touch screen on here. Now I've never been successful in getting these on, but through the microscope I might have more chance. I'm so happy with that. Right, okay, so uh, hopefully it will be it will be a working one. It's just whether or not I can get the touch screen working. So it looks like the backlight isn't that important, but if I can fix it properly, I will do. When I say not important, I mean it looks like it makes a contact on its own. Remember, if I put a bit of captain tape over there, because this is a backlight one, then it will be a much better connection. But let me get my microscope in, and let's see if we can get it done properly. Right, so I've got the Wii U down here, I've got the microscope set up, but I am working on the floor, and the camera's at a completely different level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in, but I don't know if my hands are going to get in the way or my head's going to get in the way. I will film it, I'll be fast forwarding through the whole thing, apart from the bit where it clips in, if I can get it to clip in. I hope I don't break it, but I've had trouble with these before in the past, and I really want to get my head around how they work. So basically, I have to get the four contacts through these four holes, and then these bits at the side will clip into the edges of the actual connector. 
So uh, if you look at a good one, you can see here. Uh, I don't. There you go. Can you see there? The four pins are through the connector, so it's a lot easier said than done. But I'll give it a go. And obviously, it's absolutely tiny as well, so that doesn't help. Let's go for it. Uh, you can see the end's broken. The end's broken here, look. Right, okay. I'm going to see if I can still get it on. It might help, it might be better than nothing. It goes on one side. You know what, maybe you have to do it upside down. It's broken now as well. off somewhere. Right, where did that go? Do you know what? I think I think I'm wasting my time on that. One side's broken. How much of a connection is it going to make? All it's going to do is lift up. If anything, it might even get in the way even more. Uh, that is incredibly, incredibly hard. It's like my tweezers. I, I wonder if I have to get even finer tweezers for work like that. Unless you have to use something like a needle. I don't know. Right, well what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the cables back in and I'm going to put captain tape over them because once they're in, I'm thinking if they work then I sh I'm pretty sure they're going to keep on working, especially if I can put tape over it. So uh, let's just do that instead. We know that we know the, uh, the backlight works, it's just whether the touchscreen works or not. Right, okay, so that's that one taped up there, and this one taped up here. So I'm pretty confident this is going to work, but I haven't tested this yet to see if it will work or not. If not, maybe I can try to put some glue gun or something on there, because they can always come off again quite easily in the future using IPA. Right, let's get this finished up now and see if it's, see what works or not. Excellent. Right, okay, so that's that, and let's plug this in here, make sure it's charging, and the light comes on. Right, I'm going to get this properly set up on the TV now, and let's see if we can get a game working on the gamepad. Right, so in case you're interested, this is the chip here, the U18 chip. You see it says SN1010007. Yeah, okay, and the other one that I changed over was this one here. Let's get a reading off that one. Okay, let's turn that one around. Remember, this was originally on here, and this, don't know what this one does. This says 2, 5, what on earth? It looks, is it just me, or does that look backwards? 2, 5, I'm not sure, is that a Q? 2, 5, B, capital A, that's really weird. Basically, on this board, the only thing we actually changed over in the end was this one chip here, U18. Let's uh, get this set on the TV. Right, so there we go, it's working. Touch screen's working as well, so if you have a listen, you can hear sounds coming through the gamepad. If I mute it there, you can hear us coming through the TV. Mute it there, and back on the gamepad again. And look at this. Everything on the touch screen appears to be working. So it looks like it's one fully working Wii U. Now I'm not going to, uh, let me put that on mute, I'm not going to show you any gameplay because I actually got claims for the music on this particular game uh, a couple of years ago. 
So uh, let me just just quickly show you that it is working on the TV and the Wii U, and then uh, we'll call it a day. The Wii U really is a good console. A lot of people seem to hate it, but I'm just wondering, is that just because they read the reviews and that it wasn't popular and all the rest of it? But the idea, the interactive side between the gamepad and the TV is really clever. And what I like is it's just instant as well. You know, I've got wireless HDMI with zero lag. It cost me £250 and uh, it works perfectly. But I would say that this works perfectly, lacking distance. I mean, if I was to take this to the other room, it would just uh, shut down. In fact, hold on, you can hear the rumble. There's a little rumble motor just here. Uh, yeah, it would close down. But if you stay within like five meters or so off the actual console, then you can see it's instant. I mean, I've never done a sort of slow motion test on it, but that to me seems to be doing exactly the same thing. So it's pretty impressive. It's just a shame that uh, there wasn't really that, that, that many games for it. It was a, a bit of, well, a massive failure as far as Nintendo was concerned, but I like it. And I love the way it feels as well. It's got a nice weight to it. It looks old-fashioned, and the screen is small in relation to the size of the tablet. But it just sits, your hands just fit perfectly on it. So, uh, yeah, I'm a bit of a fan of the Wii U. Right, so there we go. That is it. I'm uh, really happy that I went back to this one and I'm glad now a year and a half later that I finally got it working so uh, yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos take care bye now